Good evening. Welcome to the 16th annual L.Y. Lancaster Memorial Lecture. I look out over the audience and see faces that I've seen here every year for these 16 years, and it's a little amazing that it seems like the men progressively age, but the ladies and I just never change. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's irrefutable, but it's unexplainable. I don't know. I do want to thank you for your attendance because your attendance and your participation helps to guarantee the success of this lecture series. I want to particularly thank the uh, Lancaster Tri Beta Biology Club, the AEDs, and the WKU alumni for co-hosting and co-sponsoring the reception we just enjoyed. The Random House Dictionary defines greatness as unusual, notable, remarkable, or exceptionally outstanding. Dr. Lancaster was all of these. Shakespeare wrote, be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. I never fit in any of those categories, I'm afraid. <clears throat> Dr. Lank was never afraid of greatness because he never believed that he was great, or if he realized it, he was too modest to admit it. It's been said that no really great man ever thought himself so. He was not born great, but he certainly achieved greatness, at least in the establishment and direction of the pre-med activities here at Western. It also has been said that the world knows nothing of its greatest men. This lecture series was created in an attempt to correct that problem. Western's motto, the spirit makes the master, should probably read, the masters made the spirit. Those early masters, through their untiring determination and selfless dedication to teaching and their exacting yet fair demands of the students, established a sense of camaraderie and pride which lingers today as the spirit at Western. Just as the spiritual and moral decadence and decay of our society is causing us to forget the reasons and the people responsible for our national greatness, we must always strive to prevent that same apathy from eroding the traditional Western spirit and the greatness of those whose lives created it. Tonight we gather again to honor and memorialize Dr. L. Y. Lancaster and the significant achievements of his life's work. The introduction of our speaker is superfluous and completely redundant exercise since all of you already know about the life and work of Richard Finley Grice, M.D. Dr. Lank was 27 years old, and Western was only 14 years old, when he was born here in Bowling Green on July the 18th, 1920. The son of one of those masters, Dr. Finley Grice, who was professor and dean for many years, and Mary Eunice Grice. He grew up exploring the hills that comprise this campus. He began kindergarten in the Western Kentucky College Training School in 1925 and graduated from Western's College High School with valedictory honors in 1937. In 1941, he received a Bachelor of Science degree from Western Kentucky State Teachers College with triple major in chemistry, biology, and physics, graduated with the Ogden Medal Valedictorian Award. The Doctor of Medicine degree was conferred in 1944 uh, by Vanderbilt University. His internship and surgical residency was completed at the University of Virginia Hospital in Charlottesville. He was awarded the Master of Science degree in Surgical Pathology as a DuPont Fellow and was selected to Sigma Psi for scientific research. Dr. Lank, by the way, was honored by election to Sigma Psi. He was an, an instructor in surgery at both the medical school and the School of Nursing at the uh, University of Virginia. His medical uh, med military service included chief of surgery at Westover Field, Massachusetts, 
and also in the Azores while he served in the United States Army Air Force. A diplomat of the American Board of Surgery, he practiced surgery for 39 years in Bowling Green. He was president of the medical staff of Bowling Green Warren County Hospital, chairman of the board of trustees at the Greenview Hospital, and also served as president of the medical staff and chief of surgery at Greenview. He was a professional delegate from Kentucky to the American Cancer Society in New York for 12 years, served as president of the Kentucky Cancer Society, and uh, received the American Cancer Society's gold medal for contribution to the control of cancer. A life fellow of the American College of Surgeons, he was on his National Board of Governors, president of the state chapter, and chairman of the Regional Credentials Committee. He served on the National Board of Governors of the Hospital Corporation of America and as a Director Emeritus of Kentucky Blue Cross Blue Shield Board of Directors. He was Vice President of the Kentucky Medical Association and is a life member of that organization and also the Bowling Green Warren County Medical Society and the Kentucky Medical Association, excuse me, the American Medical Association. He was a member of the Southeastern Surgical Congress and also elected to fellowship in the Southern Surgical Association. He's been president and on the council of the Kentucky Surgical Society. He's on the executive board of the Audubon Council, the Boy Scouts of America, he served two ter terms as board president, as a member at large of the National Council of Boy Scouts, and has received the Silver Beaver Award for distinguished service to youth. Currently, he serves on Lost River District and Shawnee Council Boards and on the National Council of Boy Scouts of America. A member of State Street Method United Methodist Church, he serves on the Administrative Board of Stewards and Council for many years. Currently, he serves on the Board of the United Methodist Missions of the Bowling Green District. He is a member of the Alumni Associations of the University of Virginia, Vanderbilt University, and was president of the Alumni Association at WKU for two years as a life member. He is currently uh, serving on the Kentucky Museum Advisory Council and on the Lancaster Board. He's a past uh, member of the Board of Directors of both the Bowling Green One County Chamber of Commerce and the Junior Ch Chamber of Commerce, and also served on the Executive Board of the Warren County Chapter of the American Red Cross. He, with his wife Wilma, enjoys numerous retirement activities especially traveling to visit the seven sons which they share between them and their five grandchildren. Robert Browning wrote a line in his poem, Rabbi Ben Ezra, the best is yet to be, and surely that's the case this evening. It is my pleasant task to, as chairman of the L.Y. Lancaster Memorial Lectureship Society's Board of Director to present as our distinguished lecturer one of our own board members a retired medical colleague, a lifelong friend of this university, and a valued personal friend, Dr. Richard Grice. <laughs> his, uh, his topic is technology and human values. To say I feel somewhat overwhelmed is putting it mildly. A very deep sense of gratitude and responsibility and humility marks this occasion for me. Your generous board of advisors now allow me to review and to comment upon some of the great fortunes of our era. Presentations of this lectureship over the past years have brought you university professors, Nobel laureates, business executives, some of the best minds of outstanding leaders in their professions and communities. I'm pleased to be able to add some observations as one who has the privilege of over half a century of presiding over or assisting in the beginning of life, its experience or its ending. It is an attempt to add some observations from the perspective of a community surgeon an area citizen who has loved his work, his location, his friends, his family, and his God, and who is grateful for the support and the guiding force of these good fortunes. To those of you who have come here to think upon good things, 
representing a wide experience and many facets of life, I shall not presume to instruct you in a way you must go. Recognizing my own inadequacy to express an ultimate program or prescription for absolute good. I hope first to, dis to review a distillate of some progress, some truths, some advantages, some advances made in this world since I first knew Dr. L. Y. Lancaster. Pausing to pay tribute to this man, he was known early to me as a friend of the family and a loyal and capable part of the faculty of Western Kentucky State Teachers College. Later, his startling reality emerged as his presentations and directions for the study of comparative anatomy made indelible impressions on my colleagues and me. He forcefully, effectively, and with dignity insisted upon growth and some success of individuals, no matter how formidable the task may have seemed. In short words and messages that would surface in our lives long after class time, he spoke to us with principled values undergirding his concepts of integrity, industry, and appropriate goal setting. In encouraging a quest for the best, he demonstrated a model of one who serves his fellow man by sharing knowledge and experiences. We met and studied in a scientific world, joining truths as they were known then in biology, physics, chemistry, mathematics, to be sure. And yet there was more. Dr. Lang knew and employed the support and exchange of philosophies with others who led our school. The similar yet varied interests of a faculty provided orchestral support, not always of harmony, but with a symphonic goal of quality of life. We've seen a succession of capable administrative leaders. The progress of fundamental eternal principles. Nor do we forget the loyal supporting staff of clerical and maintenance personnel whose unsung loyalties have given substance to an institution. The unifying influences of all these allow us not to deify these persons, but to recognize and draw from their strengths. In reviewing the subject, we may touch only a few points, noting such mega realities in our present life as an increasing world of 260,000 persons per day. Knowledge expanding more rapidly than any one person could possibly assimilate. Media growth with 72,000 shows per month over thousands of channels. And other statistical evidence of expansion of world knowledge and activities. Since I first met Dr. Lancaster, noteworthy scientific advances have included the science of atom splitting, the birth of fluorescent light, establishment of Mount Palomar's 200-inch telescope, electron microscope, polymer chemistry to minimize shortage of natural materials, flight records to detail important parts of airplane operation, the atomic bomb development and devastation, improvement in discovery and production of antibiotics, development of transistors to replace the bulky, fragile vacuum tube, computers, mathematical machines of unimaginable importance, the development of television with colors, the use of radar for weather observations, heart-lung machines to permit surgical successes in new blood studies and blood supplies for hearts, SOX polio vaccine, construction and the use of satellites for telephone and TV signals, development of electronic circuits on tiny modular chips, electronic typesetting, moon landing, in vitro fertilization of human eggs, new cruise missiles with radar and computer components, surgical joint replacement, storage of books on disks, emission tomography and magnetic resonance techniques the use of human DNA as an identification source, automobiles smarter with new materials, aerodynamics, navigational systems, 
the technology of observing and manipulating matter on an atomic scale which foretold the age of quantum electronics and optical devices. This rapid overview of widely divergent subjects is somewhat dizzying as we attempt to grasp the speed with which world experiences occur. In the almost 60 years since class time, rapid survey shows a massive progression of facts and knowledge, explosion of technologies, an almost unbelievable transformation of details of how things are formed, how they work, how they are synthesized. Our classroom, sometimes changing from a lecturing, questioning, single professor, has often become a site of new instructional technologies and multimedia presentation of volumes of knowledge to capture, modify, and present images to expand the program to the inquiring minds of our students. In these few years, we have split atoms, explored the universe, delved into unseen mysteries of minute cellular structure. We have discovered genetic secrets that open new worlds of exploration of management, have flooded the airways with heretofore unknown waves, communicating with amazing speed. With these advances, because we can, should we? What thoughts do we transmit with such speed? Where do we go when we arrive in a hurry? Have we better things to say? What to do with the lives we save or prolong? With our thousands of new cable channels, will we have better things to show? Let us look into a few various individual fields of activity with a brief glance. First, we have found the speed of electronic calculation outstripping personal mental figuring. What direction now for computer development? Will a newer, faster material replace the silicon semiconductor? Where will the information go? Shall we spend great funds to utilize the weightlessness of space to provide orbiting manufacturing facilities to fabricate better materials and chemical compounds? Current concepts of calculating with strings of DNA base pairs instead of binary digits gives rise to such terms as biomolecular computing. Advances abound in the transmission of images and light via wires, without wires, through glass fibers. Satellites transmit telephone and television signals. A century ago, Marconi sent radio waves through the air to a simple receiver. Today, communication advances increase personal exchanges through intelligent networks so that 20 million people in America are said to use cellular phones. Competition and research are intense in the methods for exchange in video and computer files. Fiber optic equipment is said to transmit 10 to 100 times faster than standard copper wiring. Major laboratories study problems of storage capacity speed of transmission, and at expense to design fiber optic networks, wired and wireless networks, and methods of combining the advantages of each. Will we, the users, be candidates to own handheld wireless computers which allow access to electronic mail, commercial online services, and the internet according to the need or the whim of the individual? Accustomed to a simple device limited to voice calls, will we employ effectively such an instrument with faxes, videos, and software applications? Will we look for smart cards to guide us through a maze of services and information so we can manipulate the expanded technologies that we can't understand? Satellites for the world ahead may allow extension of communication to underserved areas where needs are not now met by copper and fiber optic networks, although budget balancing, balancing may be a problem. Computers a few years ago filled rooms with vacuum tubes and apparatus, but one predictor holds that in 25 years from now, a single computer will have all the capabilities of the combined Silicon Valley machines today. Technology of increasing numbers of multiple microprocessors on a single chip 
now envisions a merged chip of memory devoted transistors and connecting massive numbers of microprocessors, becoming such a high-end microprocessor as to be a computer itself. An intriguing idea involves technology surpassing silicon-related substances in the development of biological mo <coughs> molecules which might be synthesized by microorganisms, not fabricated in a laboratory or in a factory. These could become the basis for our data storage systems. Transportation has seen growth from the romantically described iron horses, the exotic U.S. Zephyr, and the European Orient Express, exemplifying the power and the speed of an earlier era. Although rail travel has been altered by air travel and interstate and international highway systems, there are advances. Steel on steel rail trains travel 300 kilometers per hour. Magnetic levitation trains 500 kilometers per hour. These suspended and guided and powered by magnets, but can we afford the expense of the altered rail bed infrastructure necessary for such progress? Japan's bullet train, Europe's TGV, Italy's new developments have somehow gotten ahead of us in the United States. Automotive technologies are faced with a complex system of arterial routes and drivers of all levels of skill and mental states. Major problems still, however, are accidents, pollutants, and wasted fuels. Intelligent vehicle developments are underway in which automobiles which see and hear and communicate with each other and with the roadway are being sought. Traffic management systems and navigational computers are in the making with the fantasy production of driverless automobiles with onboard cameras and computers operating and adjusting for speed and weather. Even now, currently available alarms warn the sleepy or the fatigued driver. Customization of hybrid automobiles with increased efficiency and fuel requirements may balance electric and internal combustion models. Commercial airlines plan 800 passenger flying wings of greater speed and safety. Practicality requires consideration of funding for the development and production of these and the establishment of receptive airports. In the meantime, we would look to cognitive engineering to improve pilot awareness and performance in current vehicles. Spacecrafts predicted for years by scientists and comic books have not advanced as anticipated by some for the cosmic exploration and travel. It has seemed prohibitively expensive to pursue such technology as a goal in itself, and varying evidences of practicality have directed and modified the programs. The days are ahead, however, when manned and unmanned vehicles with solar electric propulsion systems with miniaturization of scientific instruments and computers may visit the accessible bodies of the solar system when we can fund it. Manufacturing and building techniques progress rapidly. The concept of development of microscopic machines, factories on microchips, are predicted by knowledgeable scientists. Materials simulating substances that bend, stretch, and shrink when needed or envisioned. Materials which may replace themselves when disrupted or which may announce retirement when used to the limits of their strength and duration. Concepts of self-assembling materials and the production of machines without immediate human direction is envisioned excitedly by those who claim to see that far. There are areas in which we have imagined farther than achieved. In the concept of robotics, some manufacturing processes have been successful in automotive production, but at times the cost and problems of revamping production lines slows such change. So-called artificial intelligence is a varied definition, generally slower in progress than once predicted, but some rapid development has been noted. For instance, a medical program called Mycin provides rapid and reliable diagnostic results in certain conditions. 
Hindrances to general intelligence automation, however, may arise in the translation of such observations as facial expressions or recognition of slurred words for which we have no rules or description. Prerequisite for good artificial intelligence would be to recapitulate in explicit computable form a background of skills, assumptions, and experiences of wide origins, the problem of how to codify common sense knowledge is being explored. This is a slowly progressive task, incorporating different cultures, ages, nationalities, levels of education, concepts, a system sharing tremendous volumes of knowledge and experiences. We have been advised of the possibilities of so-called virtual reality, where a person is immersed in a computer-generated world in which people behave as if they are somewhere other than they are. Perceptions appealing to sight, hearing, touch present images that respond to one's movements. Simulated sensations of force, resistance, texture, smell are said to be provided by the technology. Its uses are complex. We saw one in use under a tent just a block from here. It may direct, however, the training of pilots and astronauts. Architects may walk through and evaluate the environment or structure they design. Virtual reality is said to make no distinction between body and mind, being at once concerned with the nature and responses of both. Its future will be interesting and varied and expensive. Now, in a little more familiar area of medical and surgical advances, Cardiac surgery involves improvement in transplantation techniques, evaluating partial and complete cardiac transfers, attempts to improve tolerance for allografts, human transfers, with minimal toxic drugs for assistance, augmentations of myocardial protection by intracellular calcium to precondition the heart, Further development of ventricular assist devices for children awaiting transplantations already in successful adult use. Combining prosthetic materials with the patient's own valves and diminishing the problems of thromboembolism. Advancing experience with operative methods for ablating chronic refractory arrhythmias of atrial fibrillation. Improvement in cardiac muscle revascularization these have been current developments. Diabetic management may receive a boost from new bio sensors, analyzing hourly glucose insulin needs and automatically delivering appropriate supplements for a deficit. Colon and rectal disease continues to emphasize advantages of screening with fecal blood tests, colonoscopy, and enzyme measurements. Attempts are underway to employ safely less invasive surgical procedures with laparoscopic assisted techniques. Combinations of surgery, irradiation, and chemotherapy remain, however, as standards for advanced tumors. Recent studies indicate that gene therapy may answer some preventive and therapeutic problems in colon cancer. Human growth hormone as nutritional support has been found associated with improved stress responses. The world continues to search for a magic bullet to cure infections, recognizing their complexity, needing probably not a bullet but a Gatling gun for combination of antibiotics, nutritional support, and immune modulations. The perspective of molecular biologists is needed as well as a clinical applicant Careful and intense studies revolve around systemic inflammatory response, multiple organ dysfunctions, transfusion risks, especially involving AIDS, hepatitis B, and cytomegalovirus. In obstetrics and gynecology, antiviral treatments for infants of HIV seropositive mothers are underway with precautions relating to late drug effects. Newer technologies involve periurethral collagen injections in the management of urinary control, improved techniques of mini laparoscopy with half millimeter instruments seek to minimize trauma while maintaining therapeutic advantage in infertility, infertility management. 
and combination therapies with surgical aspirators for reducing the size of ovarian malignancies have drawn attention. In liver surgery, argon beam coagulation and ultrasound dissection have allowed more accurate removal of pathological lesions. In neurological surgery, microsurgical, endoscopic, arthroscopic, laser-assisted, fluoroscopic controlled disc removal for herniated nuclear pulposus has advanced. In other words, the ruptured disc has a new fix. Subarachnoid hemorrhage control has been aided by new techniques. Carotid arterial narrowing, identified by sophisticated imagery, has been improved by medications and surgical endarterectomy with a concomitant reduction in strokes. Ophthalmic surgery continues to succeed with cataract extraction and lens implant procedures, keratorefractive surgery with optical corrections, surgical management and nutritional support for macular hemorrhages and degeneration, freezing or cryotherapy for some tumors, and laser therapy for glaucoma. Orthopedic surgery holds continued interest in tendon surgery for joint instability, arthroscopy for meniscus and loose body removal, improved joint replacements and improved ability in stabilization and osteogenesis problems in fractures. Otolaryngology includes endoscopic sinus surgery, evaluations of tube tympanostomy for otitis media and effusion in children, and microvascular techniques for functional rehabilitation in improvement of swallowing and articulation. Plastic surgery moves forward with efforts for scarless healing, acceleration of epidermal growth, and studies in tissue engineering. Thoracic surgery brings increased abilities to transplant lungs for emphysema and cystic fibrosis, and in the use of preoperative chemotherapy and irradiation for lung resection for cancer. Transplantation continues to find adjunctive measures in bone marrow transplants and newer immunosuppressive agents. There is much interest in genetic modification and other methods to expand the receptivity from poorly matched human donors, allografts, and in xenografting from animals. Allograft of pancreatic tissue in insulin-dependent dependent diabetics, liver transplants, small bowel transplants, all involve significant problems of rejection and require much immunosuppression as well as careful attention to tissue preservation and control of infection. Fabrications of tissues and organs such as heart valves, skin, and tendons are on the books, and ultimate scientific hopes involve the production of complex body parts for those lost by accident, disease, or congenital defects with advanced strategies for tissue engineering. We should mention, however, that donor shortage continues to limit the use of current transplant techniques to treat diseases and to save lives. Success in the management of trauma and burns increases both from the knowledge of pathophysiology responses and from rapid and accurate evaluation and effective laparoscopic intraoperative studies and management. Here again, not just technology, but in the trauma field, community responsibility in the use of helmets, adherence to safety regulations, and further control of factors of drugs and alcohol are vital. Urology brings increased awareness and detection of prostatic cancer with employment of various modalities in its management and studies and accomplishments in male infertility with microsurgical and other techniques. Vascular field activities include stroke prevention and management and the judicious anticoagulant and endarterectomy techniques. Improvement in aortic aneurysm management and advanced studies in molecular and cell biology research in fundamental vascular problems. Molecular genetics is a complex and busy field of study of regulation of cell cycles, tumor suppressive genes, and familial tumor tendencies. 
The genetic basis for over 4,000 conditions have been labeled as related to an abnormal or damaged gene. These include cancers, AIDS, arthritis, heart disease, senility. All these may be related to impairment of genes involved in body defenses, to an immune system, or to some altered mechanism of normal body functions. The precise genetic basis for many problems is sketchy, but information and knowledge is increasing. Exciting developments in tumor management have involved several approaches to the insertion of certain genes into tumors, inducing a chemosensitivity to drugs, indicating possibly more successful treatment of certain primary and metastatic tumors. Genetically engineered cells are being used to induce anti-tumor immunities to various growths, including melanoma, lung, and breast cancer. Insertion via virus carriers deprived of their disease-producing capabilities may penetrate cells depositing a normal or purposely altered gene to produce therapeutic levels of a desired protein. Such might be genes to halt replication of cells or to protect a susceptible person's reaction or to enhance cellular sensitivity to a drug. This morning's papers report such a success of immune deficient disease in two little girls. Genetic alteration of somatic cells affecting only that patient is generally acceptable, but to many, an alteration of germ cells that might affect all descendants brings a more controversial consideration. The insertion of correcting or altering genes into an affected organ may destroy only localized disease, but hazards involve selectivity in which more than the affected cells are hit and sensitive normal cells may be attacked. We recognize that we may already have experienced alteration of germ cells by tobacco smoking, irradiation, other conditions and drugs, Thus are born ethical decisions that might affect generations to come. Ethical implications are indeed a concern. While we may plan to provide for the demise of a disabling or lethal illness, does our knowledge provide us with a less noble capability where a group might seek to improve upon normal or non-diseased persons? Misguided or ill-intentioned attempts to alter genetic composition could be tragic, and we must approach progress with vigilance and concern of responsible persons, yet not fail to employ those measures which would most assuredly improve our neighbor or our heirs. Could some of the new techniques point the way to less expensive ways to improve? Genetic alteration just might indicate measures to help that would involve more expensive organ transfers. Vaccines have been and may be used to control prolonged management of more costly diseases and disabilities. We will need to recall in any field the limitations of technology, especially in health considerations. We look to the non-political, non-technical, non-financial aspects of medical care to emphasize the words care and compassion. The human side of the profession, the enduring base of medical practice. In this presentation, we've recalled some of the world as it was and is, have mentioned some significant achievements of our modern era, have looked with some amazement and partial grasp into the contemporary states of technology and the future. We have noted that striking quantities of information can be processed, transmitted, and stored at speeds beyond our imagination, how satellites, space wires, and fiber optics combine to bring signals to our door, the progress of transportation on rails in space and on highways, the areas of health and medicine changing daily, challenging us with successes and problems. The frontiers have not all been crossed, and opportunities abound for the innovative, the curious, the persistent. The limits of human understanding are sharply apparent to me 
as one with average intelligence searching to absorb and utilize these facts with overabundance of digital data and technological wonders. We must listen to our scientists and other fellow men with a depth of attention on all possible understanding. Seek to avoid the negatives of unwarranted criticism and strive to employ consideration for other persons with expressions of service, unconditional love, but not necessarily agreement. That consideration may be best expressed with shared expansion of knowledge combined with control and direction of our own abilities, with recognition that we are all co-learners. In a small way, I am associated with a multi-billion dollar healthcare organization. The values of such companies must depend ultimately for success, however, upon the delivery to individuals all the care and caring of which we are capable. My membership in the American College of Surgeons is primarily important in the tenets and criteria which ask, is it good for the patient? I serve a widespread organization of the Boy Scouts of America who in spite of incomplete evaluations and decisions in all human factors, in human existence and rights, focuses on the needs and the quality development of the boy, the objective in the process of this field of service. Large, strong, rich, powerful groups with massive achievements of scientific successes are not intrinsically good or evil. Only if used in the best balance in the pursuit of higher quality of life for world humans would success mark their accomplishments. Technologic advancements may be considered to relieve ailments and to extend life, not to create a useless mass of doddering humanity, taxing financial and uh, demographic concerns without value to themselves or to their families. Medical and technical process and progress is enormously expensive and has been termed morally ambivalent in sometimes extending life, but not quality. We must pause in the dizzying partial comprehension of these wonders to ask just where we are as human beings when technology has allowed or promoted improvement and where it has presented ethical and moral consideration for our lives. Because we can travel faster, should we? Because we can transmit ideas rapidly, do we have more to say? Has the quality of our lives and of our descendants been enhanced? In acknowledging states of technical process and progress, we must consider the balance we must achieve to allow effective integration of these technical advances into our lives, along with the respect for the dignity and worth of our fellows. Volumes of knowledge and speed alone are of little value without balance in our minds, bodies, and souls. Vital to quality living is recognition by each of us of divinely granted independence and responsibility, as well as acknowledgement of the interdependence of all beings. Time must be given to reflection, to think on these things, to know the powers of shared unity and the privilege of prayerful channels with our God. This balance is not the sole prerogative of only the technologic scientist or the philosopher or the dreamer. It is for you and me recognizing wide variances in physical, mental, and spiritual capabilities and in the capacity to understand, to know, to believe, and to receive advances. Where would we demonstrate the considerations of which we speak? In forgiveness of real or imagined personal offenses? In joining forces with our churches in interval and internal or far-reaching ministries? by serving community groups whose effectiveness we would promote, by reading to or learning with an illiterate, by seeking out the aching hearts of the elderly or the child, by attentive devotion to our life companion. The future is here, change will occur, but just as assuredly can be the persistence of changeless inner principles that will not die. We shall continue to welcome recognition of personal integrity of those who make 
and keep commitments. Earlier, we listed some of the scientific achievements of the century. Consider for a moment a supplementary and balancing list of joys and privileges. Remember and enjoy the warmth of a friendly hello, the security of a touching hand, the uplift of a smile, the support of a hug, feel the wind on our faces on Sally's Rock, hear the music of great instruments, of children's voices, of rustling leaves, thrill to the growth of an architectural masterpiece or of a tree or of a person. Recall the closeness of a child's story of the day's blessings or troubles, the deep joy of sharing with your life's companion. Lest we become co-conspirators in technical arrogance, let us continue to balance our lives with our true sense of purpose and share our opportunities and appreciation with our families, our neighbors, and our God. Thank you. Thanks again for your presence. I predicted earlier that the best was yet to be. I think you'll have to agree with me, the best has just been. For those who made it to, uh, earlier reservations for the dinner, that will follow a brief uh, intermission. And with that, I guess we conclude the lecture for this year. Thank you, Richard. Thank you for coming. <laughs>